The Japanese Prime Minister's political gamble in calling an early election has paid off. Shinzo Abe's ruling coalition won a landslide victory. His Liberal Democratic Party and its partner Kometo have secured a two-thirds majority in the lower house. The parties won 326 of the 475 seats in the chamber. That's well above the 317 needed to secure a two-thirds majority. And it means the ruling parties will be able to set their agenda for the Diet and see it through. Prime Minister Abe says he wants to push forward with his policies. They include his economic plan, known as Abenomics. He spoke to media on Monday, one day after the election win. Yesterday, we got voter support for Abenomics. So, I want to advance the policy in three areas. We will take action immediately with economic stimulus measures by the end of this year. We will compile a budget for the next fiscal year. The Diet will be convened at the start of next year. We want to carry out drastic deregulation in areas such as agriculture, health care and energy. And we'll strongly promote our growth strategy. We will not change our policy of reducing dependency on nuclear power through energy savings and introducing renewable resources. But as for nuclear plants, if we can confirm the necessary safety measures, we'd like the facilities to be restarted with the consent of local people. Amending the Constitution has been our party's consistent aim since its foundation. Amendments need two-thirds approval in the Diet and a majority of support in a national referendum. As LDP president, I would like to continue to work to seek public understanding on the matter. And our senior political commentator, Masayo Nakajima, gives us his insight on the Prime Minister's news conference. While well, Prime Minister Abe emphasized that he will continue his policy of putting the economy first. Uh, the Prime Minister said that he called the general election because he wanted voters to weigh in on his economic policy, known as Abenomics. He views his coalition's victory as a strong mandate to press on and Abe is positioning himself to tackle other issues on his agenda. He promised to pass legislation for a new security policy, allowing Japan to defend closely related countries that come under attack. And he'll seek a final decision on restarting nuclear reactors, which had passed safety standards. Abe also said he will work to earn the public's understanding about amending the constitution. The LDP's stance is that amending the constitution is necessary to strengthen Japan's defense. But I think the Prime Minister's top priority is delivering on his promise to revive the world's third largest economy. GDP has slumped consecutively. A hike in the consumption tax from 5 to 8 percent in April is largely to blame. That's why Abe decided to put off a plan to raise the tax again to 10 percent until 2017. Abe mentioned drawing up new economic measures to get the economy moving. Japanese voters are now waiting to see if he'll do that successfully. The coalition led by the uh, Abe's Liberal Democrats had a sizable major majority ahead of the vote. Abe could have continued to govern Japan, work on the economy, and delay the consumption tax increase, all without sending voters to the polls. But his public approval rating had fallen. Abe wanted to boost support ahead of the Liberal Democrats Party leadership election next autumn. He must be re-elected as LDP president if he wants to stay on as prime minister. 
the decisive victory in the lower house election strengthens Abe's hand against rivals within his party. He can tell LDP members that he has the public's backing to lead the country for another four years. Now, here's what people in Tokyo had to say about Abe's win. I'm happy the LDP has scored a major victory. I think Abe is the person who can make us proud of our country. I'm afraid Japan's politics will turn autocratic. I think it would be better if various parties could take part by providing different ideas for the public good. People in Fukushima are hopeful the government will focus more on the reconstruction of the prefecture. I hope the winners will try hard for Fukushima's recovery. I want the government to come up with a policy that makes me feel glad to have been a farmer in Japan, a policy that will last for 100 years. And many people question the low vo voter turnout in Sunday's election. I saw many friends saying on Twitter that they are not going to the vote because it was cold. They weren't interested. So I thought I didn't have to go either. My colleagues weren't going to the vote. I have an impression that only elder people went. Voter turnout was 52.66 percent, a post-war low. That's more than six points lower than the general election two years ago. Officials in Japan's Miyazaki Prefecture say they've confirmed an outbreak of bird flu at a poultry farm. They've begun culling around 4,000 birds. They found the H5 strain of the flu in three birds on a farm in Nabeoka City. They conducted genetic tests after 29 birds were found dead on the farm. Workers began culling chickens early Tuesday morning. They planned to bury the carcasses nearby. Prefectural authorities have ordered two nearby farms not to ship any poultry or eggs. The Agriculture Ministry held an urgent meeting to discuss how to respond to the outbreak. We have to take swift action. The initial response is most important in preventing the spread of the flu. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has asked officials to provide fast and accurate information. He told members of his government to work closely together to prevent the flu spreading.
Well, South Korean experts, as we've been telling you, are in Japan now to study seafood from Fukushima and seven other prefectures. The five-day study trip could result in Seoul lifting a 15-month ban on seafood imports from these areas. The South Korean researchers visited the Agriculture and Fisheries Ministry in Tokyo on Monday. They said consumers back home are concerned about food safety. But the head of the fisheries agency said it is monitoring marine products strictly to ensure that only safe seafood circulates at home and abroad. The experts said they will scrutinize how Japanese fisheries workers handle products. They said their findings will be reflected in their decision on whether to end the import ban. The group will visit the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant to see how workers there are trying to prevent radioactive water from leaking into the sea. They also plan to watch test fishing off of Fukushima Prefecture. Living in some remote villages around Japan are looking for ways to address a common problem. They're seeing more and more young people leave in search of work. So they've started to create a stress-free environment that's being alluring them back. The village of Kosuge lies about two hours west of central Tokyo. A bus pulls in. A group of city people looking to relieve their stress. It's a tour for young professionals in their 20s and 30s with demanding jobs in Tokyo with IT or financial companies. Physical activity, such as tree thinning, is an important part of the stress relief program. The tour is accompanied by a nurse who explains the relaxing benefits of each activity. What's an amazing smell? As you cut the tree, it releases scents that have a very common effect, which helps to eliminate stress. After the hard work, they wind down with yoga. So who gets depressed easily? The nurse also leads a seminar on stress prevention, giving the participants practical lifestyle advice. Even the air smells different here. It's good that it's not so far from the city. The tour was organized by Hiroyuki Mori, a member of a local non-profit group. He moved to the village earlier this year, leaving behind his stressful lifestyle of working as a systems engineer in Tokyo. My aim is to share my experience with other people who are suffering from stress. I hope it helps them connect with each other better, and they can apply this experience in their workplaces when they get back to the city. The NPO group has begun a new program, arranging long-term accommodation at a hot spring inn. Some rooms have been converted for use as satellite offices with high-speed internet connections. So they're ideal for IT companies doing project work. The baths can be used any time. It's an environment conducive to communication. <laughs> It's good to be able to discuss things we'd never touch on in daily life. During breaks, they can work with local people on farming jobs. It's all aimed at helping them relax. It's quiet here and there's no TV, so it's easier for us to communicate with each other. That's the appeal. I'm thinking we could keep our headquarters in Tokyo, but actually move up here to work. Tackling stress and revitalizing the local community, it's a win-win situation, and it could become a model for other villages around Japan that are dealing with dwindling populations.